All right, we got one here. This gonna piss some people off. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So guys, I accidentally deleted the uh, intro to this video as well as the first part. So um, yay for me. Here's the intro. This is another Vegan Talks video. This is me reacting to your unpopular vegan opinions. So basically, I just went on Instagram and I asked you guys, what were some of your unpopular vegan opinions? And I got a ton of responses. So this is actually going to be part one of two videos. And I've actually done one of these in the past as well. So I'll link that video down below as well. If you want to participate in future videos like this and give your unpopular vegan opinions, or if you want to ask me questions, make sure you follow me on Instagram at CheapLazyVegan. And without further ado, let's get started with this video. All right, next unpopular vegan opinion. It's okay to not always be cruelty-free. Diet is more than 98% of the issue. Everything will follow. Okay, that's interesting. I'm not fully disagreeing here, but I'm also not fully agreeing. You're right in that diet is a big part of the issue. You know, we eat three times a day, sometimes more, and we eat 365 days out of the year. So it is going to be a big factor. But the everything will follow, I don't necessarily agree. If you don't change the way you think about the situation, if you don't change your philosophy, your ethical philosophy, or if you don't understand the ethical philosophy, if you don't make that connection, I don't know if changes will follow. For example, if somebody is following a plant-based diet for their health, then sure, they are doing a lot to help the animals, right? Because they're not eating animals three times a day. However, if you don't change that philosophy and the way of thinking that basically changes your perspective about about how we should treat animals, then how do we think that that's going to change, you know, other aspects of the way we treat animals, you know? You can still be a plant-based dieter and go to the zoo. You can buy products that were tested on animals. You could do all of these other things because you wouldn't understand that you wouldn't have changed your mind about those things because you're just following a plant-based diet for health reasons. So yeah, I think changing your mindset, first and foremost, is the most important thing. Understanding the ethical philosophy is the most important thing. And then those actions can follow through. Yeah, am I making sense? Okay, anyways, continuing. Somebody wrote, soy milk is better than oat milk. What do you guys think? Is soy milk better than oat milk? Um, you know, I don't know. I like both. I don't necessarily prefer one or the other. I think I like both, actually. Soy is quite good. Soy is quite good, but oat milk is also really good, so. I like both, what can I say? Okay, this one I don't even think is an unpopular vegan opinion, but it says protein is overrated. People are way too obsessed. So the reason why I say it's not an unpopular vegan opinion is that I feel like in the general world, people are a little bit too obsessed with protein. Yes, people are a little too like honed in on protein. They think protein is the most important thing ever. So that's definitely true. In the vegan community, I wouldn't say that that's true. I think that vegans, I think nowadays we kind of have a pretty good balance um, as far as what I can see from like online. <laughs> um, we're not as like protein phobic as we used to be, I think. So I think back in the day when I first was like looking into the vegan lifestyle, everyone was talking about how like protein is just not that important and it's really not that big of a deal. As long as you're eating enough, you're getting enough protein. And I really do think that is a little bit damaging when it comes to that kind of advice because I talk about this all the time, but like, I don't think protein is like, oh my God, like it's so important, but it is still a macronutrient. Okay, there's fat, there's protein, then there's carbs. Those three are all very important in your life and in your body. They are very necessary, okay? So to say like one of them is just not important, I just think it's just ridiculous. And I know the argument is there's protein in everything. Okay, yeah, sure, there is protein in everything, but the amount differs depending on the food. And there's nothing wrong with eating, you know, high protein plant foods. There's plenty and they are healthy for you. Beans tofu, lentils, <laughs> you know, these are healthy foods. So there's no point of avoiding those foods. They help you feel satiated. When I add protein into my meals, and I, when I say protein, I mean things that are a little bit higher in protein, I feel a lot more satisfied. I feel a lot more satiated. It helps me feel full longer and it's just better all around. So to me, it's important in that sense. I don't obsess over it. I'm not like, oh my God, like I'm gonna die if I don't eat so much protein, me, me, me. I'm not like that, okay? But I still, try to put some kind of protein source into each of my meals because if I don't, I will be hungry in an hour. That's just me, okay? I know not everybody's like that, but protein is proven to be the most satiating macronutrient. So 
It's not like I'm just making this up, <laughs> okay? All right, this one says, not sure if this is an unpopular opinion, but I don't feel bad at all about killing a mosquito or a cockroach. Okay, like I kind of agree. <sighs> like it's not that I don't feel bad because I don't want to kill, like I don't want to unnecessarily kill anything, but if I'm killing a mosquito, usually the mosquito is biting my arm, okay? If I'm killing a cockroach, ugh, usually the cockroach is in my home. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not gonna kill something unless it's like invading. Ah, you know what I mean? It is like, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> I feel like there's such a disconnect between us and insects. Like, I don't know. It's very hard to feel empathetic, I think, toward an insect. Doesn't mean it's the right thing to do to kill them unnecessarily. I just think like they are just so far from what we are. Um, but again, doesn't make it morally just for us to just kill insects. I don't know. What do you guys think about the insect thing? What do you think? What do you think? Tell me. <laughs> Ooh, this one's gonna be a little bit controversial. There is no ethical reason for indigenous people to consume meat. Appeal to tradition fallacy. So, here's the thing. I agree, and I also don't agree, depending on the context. <laughs> I feel like this is gonna be me throughout this whole video. But basically, I think I've seen this like pattern in the last few years maybe, um, especially over the last couple of years, where I feel like the need to appeal to or be sensitive to minority groups has become more important than the message of veganism itself. It's almost like it trumps veganism. And I think that there is a way of having these discussions without being insensitive to or, you know, not understanding of minority issues, which obviously do exist. So it's, it's a really complicated thing. And I don't think it's as simple as, oh, if you're indigenous, then you can eat meat. Like, whatever, it's part of the tradition. In that case, yeah, that is called appeal to nature or appeal to tradition, appeal to, tra ugh, I can't talk, appeal to tradition fallacy, where basically you're like, oh, it's tradition, therefore it's good, therefore it's fine, which is not the case. We wouldn't say that about anything else if it was a white tradition that was doing it. So to kind of like give leeway or give some sort of free pass to certain groups because they have been marginalized and because they have been unfortunately targeted, you know, to give them the leeway of doing things that we wouldn't allow other groups to do, morally speaking, as vegans, then it wouldn't make sense, right? I do understand to some extent, you know, for example, certain indigenous tribes or groups, not just indigenous, but like certain cultures, it, that's like the only way that they know or that's the only way that they've lived or whatever it was. Or maybe they're in a situation, for example, where they're living somewhere where there isn't really that much food otherwise because of whatever reason and they have to hunt or fish to get food. And in that case, I think that's a valid um, reason that they have to eat meat or eat animal products. But simply to say, oh, because it's indigenous tradition, therefore they can do whatever they want. I don't know if I agree with that. Okay, I guess the problem is we live in a world where it is very Eurocentric and it's become really like, you know, it's the white way is the right way kind of thing, right? So it's like white people coming into a certain country, taking over the land and then deciding what is right and what is wrong. And maybe that's what veganism feels like in a lot of these instances, especially toward indigenous people. Maybe indigenous people feel like this is like another case of like white is right, syndrome. You know, you have this group of white people thinking, oh, you can't eat this way because it's wrong. And then indigenous people are like, well, you know, just because, you know, you're white doesn't mean you're allowed to dictate how I live. So I get that it's difficult, but um, I think we have to look at things from, you know, beyond the lens of, you know, race and really look at the damage that we're doing. Now, is it fair to say that most of the damage is not done by indigenous people? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> it is definitely fair to say that, okay? A lot of the damage, a lot of animal suffering and a lot of animal exploitation really comes from capitalism, just modern day living. And that causes so much animal exploitation and harm. And that really is the root of most of the harm that we do to animals and to other humans. So is my main concern what indigenous people eat? No, that's not my main concern. But I also don't necessarily believe in giving anybody a free pass to do whatever simply because because they are of a minority group. So it's, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I'm kind of like, I'm torn. I'm torn in a lot of ways. I don't think it is as simple as like, indigenous tribes can eat 
whatever they want and do whatever they want. I don't believe that, of course, but I also don't believe that um, they're doing, you know, the most harm. I don't think this is, this should be even a, a focal point of our discussion, to be honest with you. I think a lot of people bring up the indigenous thing just to kind of distract from the actual message of veganism. Most vegans are not going to indigenous tribes and like protesting. Okay, they're protesting outside of like McDonald's. Okay, like we're not like, you know what I mean? So it's again, I feel like it is a distraction from the main message. That's not the main core message of veganism. Like we're not trying to go into, you know, some kind of village in the middle of nowhere and stop people from hunting and fishing or something, right? So yeah, there you go. Next. All right, so I got a few of these similar responses. Tempeh has a weird and gross texture, no matter how it is prepared. Listen, listen, I used to think the same thing, but now I love tempeh. I love tempeh. I don't know if it's an acquired taste or maybe some people just don't like it. Fair enough. I can see why it is strange. I do remember the first time I ate it, I was like, this is disgusting. <laughs> and now I'm like, give me the tempeh, okay? It's definitely not for everybody, but I really like it. That's just me. Junk food vegan equals future ex vegan. You're an adult, eat your vegetables. Damn. <laughs> Ooh, okay, here's the thing. <laughs> Here's the thing. Well, I have to respectfully disagree. I have to respectfully disagree because what I've actually seen happen is not that junk food vegans end up quitting veganism. Often what I see is health vegans, quote unquote, health vegans quitting veganism. To me, I think I've seen more of that than the other. Again, I don't know the numbers. I don't know the statistics. Let me know if you have some statistics, but from what I can see, it isn't necessarily the junk food vegans. And I'm putting this in quotations because I don't really know that many vegans that like only eat, you know, processed foods and no vegetables. Like I really don't know many vegans that do that, but I definitely know that I've seen a lot of health vegans quit veganism. A lot of people that followed a specific sort of vegan diet for their health reasons, a lot of people that followed some kind of high carb, low fat diet, or some people that did raw veganism or raw something, a lot of people that, you know, did some sort of like juice cleansing, you know, you, you know the type, you know? A lot of those people have quit veganism. A lot of people that are really, really into health you know, making sure they're eating clean. I think there's a lot of reasons behind it. I've talked about it before, but let me share with you what I think. Here's my theory. My theory is if you are somebody that is willing to go vegan simply for reasons of health. Now, a lot of these people, they do maybe go vegan for health and then later make some kind of ethical connection with the animals. Those people that are willing to go plant-based for health, 100% plant-based for health. In my perspective, I've said this before, in my perspective, that is an extreme approach. I'm gonna say it. It's kind of an extreme approach to health. This means they're really obsessed with their health, right? Because if you haven't made any sort of ethical connection, we're gonna put the ethical thing aside. We're just gonna talk about the diet. If you're willing to completely give up all animal products for your diet, all animal products, not even like a tiny bit, not even like, ooh, I'm gonna eat, you know, maybe once a week I'll eat some meat or something like that. Like you're gonna do no animal products, but you haven't made any sort of ethical connection. There's no ethical reason behind this. No animal products. To me, that means you're really, really into your health. Like you're like almost orthorexic. I said it, okay? So not everybody, okay, not everybody, but like it's likely to attract people Okay, that kind of lifestyle is likely to attract people that have some sort of issues with controlling their diet, some sort of issues with what they eat, really like obsessively, you know, making sure that they're eating completely healthy and clean. I feel like it attracts a lot of potentially orthorexic people. Okay, orthorexia is when you're like, it's like a eating disorder, I think, where you're like really obsessed with eating clean, that it becomes actually like problematic. And I think that a lot of people that tend to be more likely to be orthorexic, they are attracted to the plant-based lifestyle. They're doing something extreme, maybe because they have some kind of health problem already that they're trying to heal, right? That's another thing. A lot of people that go to that extreme of going plant-based only for their health might already have some kind of health problem. So when veganism or going plant-based does not fix their health problem, they're going to easily jump back to eating animal products. Maybe not easily, but they will maybe potentially jump back into eating animal products. Whereas if you went vegan for ethical reasons, you're probably going to find some other way of living as a vegan. I don't know. Again, these are just my assumptions. Now, obviously I don't condone eating junk food all the time. Okay. <laughs> but I think a little junk food once in a while, 
it's all about balance. A little bit of Beyond Meat burgers, a little bit of vegan chicken nuggets. I think that's fine. I think you just need to, you know, again, I hate this word, but you need to have some sort of balance, okay? I try not to be super obsessive about eating clean. You guys know me, okay? But I also try not to eat junk food all the time. I don't try to eat like processed food all the time, but it gets in there and that's okay. So yeah, I don't agree that junk food vegans are more likely to be an ex-vegan because based on what I've seen, it's the opposite. <laughs> All right, we got one here. This gonna piss some people off. Tofu smells like stinking socks. Girl, I don't know what kind of tofu you are eating, okay? But like, I, no, no. I see nothing wrong with fishing or hunting to provide for my elders who can no longer do it. Okay, are you, are you vegan though? Like, <laughs> that's not a, that's, if you're a vegan, I shouldn't have to explain why that's not a very vegan thing. And what, like, can they not eat anything else? Like, what, you don't see anything wrong with fishing and hunting? Like, are you sure you're vegan? <laughs> you don't see anything wrong with unnecessarily killing animals? Okay. Moving on. Don't try to modify menus. It makes veganism seem difficult. Ooh, I don't agree for the most part, but I get what you're saying, kind of. <sighs> Here's the thing. Sometimes you gotta modify the menu, okay? Sometimes you gotta do it. What if you have a perfectly fine veggie burger situation, but there's a piece of cheese in it or some mayo? It's not hard to ask them to take that out. Okay? A lot of times, a lot of places will have some kind of vegetarian option. So sometimes it's as easy as just asking them to take off the cheese, something like that. That being said, I am definitely on the camp of trying your hardest not to be difficult <laughs> at the restaurant. I try not to ask too many questions. I try to keep it simple, easy to do, even if it means there might be a micro dose of some sort of animal product in like the bread. For example, I am not the person to ask them to check the ingredients for the bread. I don't act like I have an allergy. I really try to make it easy and simple because I don't want to send a message to anybody that being vegan is like super difficult and that you have to make all of these little adjustments. Whilst I don't necessarily agree that you shouldn't make any modifications at a restaurant because let's face it, non-vegans make modifications all the time as well. It's not just vegans that make modifications, people. Non-vegans also make modifications. So I think it's fine, but it's about like being somewhat a little bit more flexible when you're in that kind of situation. When I'm at a grocery store, I will check ingredients lists, okay? But when I'm in a restaurant, I try to be a little bit less of a burden on the restaurant just because I don't want people to think that it's so difficult to be vegan. Okay, so every time I do these unpopular vegan opinions things, I get some kind of response like this. Don't at me for this, but I still don't entirely understand how honey isn't vegan or ethical. So I was also kind of like, confused, mainly because I was ignorant on the topic and I didn't really do my research. Although I always kind of think to myself, if there is a money motive involved when we have to use an animal as a means to an end, it's probably not a good thing for the animal, right? Like I always kind of like think about it that way. So even if I don't fully understand the complexities you know, of honey, if I don't understand the honey industry, I just think to myself, it is an industry that needs to use bees to make a profit. It uses bees as a means to an end to make a profit. So to me, it's just like common sense that it would be exploitative in nature just by the very nature of it. The fact that we are using cows for milk and selling that milk for profit, it's a commercial industry, okay? People are making money off of the juice squeezed from a cow. That itself is to me, without knowing all the ins and outs of the cow, the cow industry, all the ins and outs of the dairy industry, the fact that I know that you know, this is a product that we sell by using animals' bodies to sell those products, to me that itself is exploitation and I don't really need to know that much else. And the fact that we can mass produce these things like honey, milk, cheese, that's another sign that it's not good for the animals involved, okay? So that's kind of like what I try to not what I try to, but that's kind of like how I think when I think about certain products. So that's the problem, right? These are sentient animals. Bees are sentient, that is a fact. And they're being used by humans as a means to an end. They're being used to produce honey. And if we're producing honey in the extent of which that we are, there has to be some exploitation. But obviously that's just my speculation 
Okay. Earthling Ed did a really good video on this, which I'll link down below, which kind of like goes into the details of the honey industry. I'm sure maybe there's some local honey farm or whatever that's like ethically produced honey or something. I'm sure they exist. But again, the extent of which we consume honey as a society is overall not good for bees, okay? And the more we normalize the consumption of honey, whether it's, you know, ethically produced or not, the more there's gonna be exploitation, if that makes sense. So I think that's why we should probably avoid it for the most part. <laughs> yeah, okay? I think it's definitely harder um, to, like I said before, empathize with insects because of the fact that they are insects and because we just, they're so far away from us, like in terms of like what we are. <laughs> So it is definitely more difficult. So I understand the kind of human, I guess, inclination to ignore, you know, these industries. So I understand the thought process. I understand that it's easier to be like, oh, I mean, what's wrong with it? They're just bees, right? But bees are incredibly important to our, our ecosystem. So anyways, I will link Earthling Ed's video down below for you to watch so that you can learn a little bit more about the honey industry and why vegans don't consume honey. All right, guys, so that is it for part one of my reacting to your unpopular vegan opinions video. Make sure you subscribe for part two so you don't miss that. I'll link my previous one below as well if you wanna keep watching. And I'll also link my vegan talks playlist below where I basically discuss all kinds of vegan topics. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.